Thank you very much for joining us, and welcome to Transforming Your Branch with Mobile Capture and ID Verification webinar. Today we have Jim Rose from The Financial Brand. He is the co-publisher and he is a renowned influencer in the financial technology industry. Also with me is Steve Craig. He is the Director of Products and Experience here at MyTech. So without any further delay, um, Jim, I'll pass the ball with you. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to be with everybody today, even though it's digitally. Uh, we have people from uh, from across the continent and uh, some from overseas as well. But um, what we're going to be talking about today is is really what I believe is one of the foundational steps of becoming a digital bank. And when we're looking at the cornerstones of a branch, it's, it's obvious to everyone that basically the cornerstones of the branch are opening accounts, um, usually for somebody new to the bank. Uh, there's a lot more being done for people that are um, current customers to be able to have them be able to apply for additional services online and even through mobile devices. But for opening accounts, primarily for somebody new to the bank, servicing accounts, administering advice, um, and providing visible reinforcement to the, the brand. And as Jim Brody mentioned, uh, who is uh, the head of Cinevate and was the previous owner of the online digital bank report, um, obviously very expensive billboards. So I think most organizations today are, are really trying to um, find out better ways to digitally accomplish these four items. Uh, next slide. Um, if we look at uh, the overall branch environment, we really have to ask ourselves, do we know what our customers and the consumer in large, how they prefer to use our branches? Um, once we answer that question, it's time to think about how digital technology can improve the process. And I think what's important here is that we continue to be telling ourselves that the consumer wants branches. Um, I believe that's still true, but the need for those branches is significantly different than it was even three years ago. Um, J.D. Power, for instance, found for the first time ever that those organizations that had the best mobile and digital banking solutions had the highest rate of satisfaction, and that Novantis found that for the first time ever, the branch location was not the key differentiator with regard to um, convenience. So what we have to do is find a way to still offer services through the branch, but in the most efficient way possible, while also supporting our mobile and online branch opening processes. Next slide. So when we talk about branch disruption, I think what we really have to do is include five digitally enabled strategies. Number one, we need to improve our distribution efficiency. And that would mean find out where we need branches as well as um, what's the most effective and efficient way to get the most customers served and most potential consumers served. We'll need to close and move branches. We need to reduce branch footprints we have to increase digital integration, and we have to improve the customer experience. Much of the brand software that exists today is staff-based, uh, supporting traditional transaction processing, account opening, and customer service. Going forward, the software needs to change, mimicking many of the digital innovations that are already in place in both the online and mobile branch and banking environments. These are things such as digital account opening, digital onboarding, proactive recognition of a consumer's relationship, and even future needs. So what we're trying to do is we're almost moving backwards in the operational flow. We're trying to take things that we're already aggressively developing for the mobile and online world and apply them into the branch environment. Banks and credit unions are already working hard to personalize the customer experience during the online and mobile interactions with the most progressive institutions really personalized interactions to the branch level, allowing branch platform personnel as well as uh, the, the teller staffs to get rid of what was once historically paper-based processes, such as new account opening, onboarding, and relationship expansion. So today we're really be looking at number four and number five, the, the increasing digital integration, integration 
thereby improving the customer experience. Next slide. So when we looked at um, our organization, Digital Banking Report and Financial Brand, looked at what we thought to be the flows of account openings over the next five years. And what we found was our estimates are that while branch openings will decrease by more than half, we're actually going to see mobile openings more than double from 2.2 to 5 uh, million uh, account openings. Now, what's interesting about that is that when you look at the chart and you see the flow and you look at online, mobile will not replace online. We're going to continue to see more applications being turned out in the online environment, but those have to improve as well. What we really want to look at here is, though, is if you look at, and if we go to the next slide, if we look at the way the customers are going to open accounts, and when we look at preferred channel of transaction type. So on the next slide, we'll see that the transaction types that consumers want, this is from Novantis. For basic information, account balances, people are more than happy to use mobile banking. And, and we've just done a recent survey and we found that, um, you know, we have not gone over the 50% threshold of people that have actually used mobile banking. So while we have a lot of discussion around the mobile channel and the online channel, we have to be aware that the consumer overall prefers, at this point at least, to use non-digital channels in a lot of instances, especially when it comes to opening a new account, such as a deposit account or a home equity loan or line of credit. So what we really get to on the right-hand side of the slide here from Novantis is the need to understand that what we need to do is provide really good digital solutions for account opening and for service issues for the branch as well as the digital channels, the online and mobile channels. When we look at the next slide, there's an explanation as to why the branch has not been abandoned completely and certainly not abandoned when you come to account opening. If you look at the top, top it shows that for online and mobile, they, they, they really are the convenience factors. So it fits my schedule, it's quick application time, it's the best channel for comparison, it's fastest access to funds, things of this nature. When you go to the bottom, you see why consumers still like the branch. It's the safest option for protection of my personal data. It gives the greatest sense of confidentiality and it provides the best answers to questions. So what we really are looking to do if we want to become a digital bank, which I think that most organizations realize that in some sense of that word or that phrase, we need to move to that, that, that entity. We have to become more of a digital bank. That applies not just to ATMs and online payments and mobile payments and, and um, account openings of this, this nature, but we also have to digitize the branch process. And hopefully in that, we can help solve for some of these other problems. So if we provide a digital account opening process that is that proves to be a safe option, proves to be confidential, the consumer would probably rather do it in their house, but until then we have to provide the bridge. The next slide shows that despite the fact that recent surveys of bank executives say that they want to move to a digital bank environment, we've revealed consistently can remarkably consistent findings when it comes to the state of mobile account openings. Approximately 75% of U.S. banks do not currently offer or plan to offer mobile account opening according to the survey by the Federal Reserve Bank. Now, what's interesting about that is that the consumer wants the, the ability to have mobile account opening, but there's still a great percentage that aren't going to be comfortable to open the account in an online environment. So what we really want to do is say, okay, again, how can we make the branch process more efficient using the same tools that we use to open mobile accounts? So when we start talking about things such as um, ID capture and um, pre-fill, things of this nature, how do we take these capabilities, these, this technology that from the financial brand's point of view and from the digital banking reporting's point of view, is extraordinarily important to building an online and strong digital experience. So what we need to do is say, okay, so how do we move 
not only towards being able to open accounts to the mobile channel, but also be able to use the same technology in the branch channel. So we look at the next, next slide. And we look at the drivers of branch channel investment. The most significant investments are being made around increasing sales growth. This is from Salent in August of 2015. But although 81% of those responding institutions agreed that digital transformation, branch transformation, was imperative, there was really no consensus on what that meaning was. So without a clear definition of what branch transportation, transformation is or even a digital bank is, it becomes harder and harder for bank executives to decide what it means for their own financial institutions. So across asset tiers, financial institutions are, com are continually motivated to improve the branch channel efficiency and effectiveness. And as you can see, what we, what we look at here, when you look at branch investment, and this is an important slide because it shows that the number one item of why people are investing in branches is to improve the sales growth. And we all of us can benefit from improving sales growth. We also want to, we have to be concerned about declining traffic or a different mix of business conducting the branch. So what, what happens is there's an investment being made to reconfigure branch structure in order to do, address the declining traffic. The drivers of branch investment also is to reduce costs. It's also competitive initiatives. So what happens is you have other organizations, fintech firms, and other organizations in each of our neighborhoods that are providing additional ways of people to use branch or non-branch investments to drive better efficiency. And 11% and instituted, it was the um, executive mandate. What is concerning here, and I don't know if it was given us more of their choices, is these are all bank-related initiatives. And I think the missing element of this is how do we take these initiatives, how do we take sales growth, declining traffic, and the reconfiguring of branches, cost pressures, and how do we turn that around and say, what can we do that's going to address these needs while at the same time addressing the need of the consumer for a better experience? The consumer does not want to go into a branch, sit down, and wait for a long, tedious, accounting process that asks all the same questions, even of current customers, that they were asked in the past. I don't know how many of you have opened an account in a branch recently. I think many people that are on these kind of phone calls, that they, they've not walked into a branch at all very frequently, if at all, in the last five to ten years. The challenge is there's still a lot of people going into the branch, especially for account opening. In addition, we don't as an industry do it very well. I did have to go into a branch recently to open an account. It was for a small business account. And I will tell you that it was probably the, one of the worst experiences that I've ever encountered, not only from the fact that there's so many questions that are being asked and forms that have to be brought to the branch, which took me three times to get all the right forms. But on top of that, the way they open the account is inefficient and ineffective, especially when you compare it to other interactions and other types of organizations that you go to to interact. So when we look at the next slide, we'll find out the impact of these declining volumes of transactions. So when we look at branch sales productivity, what we're finding is the productivity level has gone down. One of the ways banks can enhance their brand and counter the cost of operating a branch, such as rent, maintenance, IT, and staffing, is to actually increase the yield on every employee and every square foot of real estate. This is obviously important at a time when actual sales productivity of branch employees have been decreasing. This is according to Novantis. So as you can see here, you have sales and non-teller full-time equivalent days. What you, you have is actually a, a reduction in productivity. To combat this trend more than just closing branches or shrinking them, which obviously has an impact, it's imperative that banks and credit unions leverage the new tools and technologies 
to maximize all the resources of the branch while still delivering the key success services and functions that the consumers desire from a, from a face-to-face -face interaction. And, and many organizations are starting to embrace the universal teller concept where basically everyone in a branch can do many of the same functions. Where you may have a mobile staff that greets the customer when they walk in the branch and interacts with them right as they, they walk in, whether it be for a basic transaction such as cashing a check or, or, or depositing a check, or more involved interactions such as opening a new account. But overall, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so we have a digitization of the branch environment. On the next slide, we find that IP Group's research found that, I'm sorry, we have some of these uh, phone on and we're getting an echo. I don't know if everybody's getting that. But IP Group's research finds that mobile capture used in branch has the potential to help financial institutions in five key areas. Number one, reducing friction. Um, using a mobile camera enabled onboarding process to pre-fill forms that would otherwise be manually completed reduces the opportunities for errors, delays, and abandonment. And abandonment, interestingly, happens in the branch as well as it happens on a mobile device. So a lot of these same benefits happen in both the mobile environment, online environment, and the branch environment. So we have to remember that reducing friction is a very important step in the branch sales process. Secondly, the capturing of user data and trailing documents. Branch employees can use mobile tools to capture, for instance, the driver's license and passports required to close a sale and automatically import these documents into the system without needing the paper. Um, this is a, a, a big hurdle for most organizations because unfortunately as I, I come from a heritage of, of being a banker and, and spent many, many years in the bank system, we, we don't let go of old processes very quickly. We've got to find ways to digitize the process. Thirdly, processing applications in real time. Using the camera to capture data provides the banks the, the ability to analyze the data in real time, leading to rapid fraud determinant in credit-related decisions. So not only can that capture provide you the information needed to fill in documents, but can also validate and verify the, the, the consumer that's in the branch and provide the springboard for credit decisioning, which helps in the cross-selling. Next is supporting in-branch staff. Branch staffs are limited in the number of transactions that employees can realistically complete in a day. To use tablets with mobile capture capabilities has been shown to help employees complete the transaction without a customer waiting. It can also support the in-branch staff. So bank branches are limited, in the, I'm sorry, that you have the ability to also um, improve the sales environment. So by delivering better structured data and uh, for onboarding, you're able to actually move to the sales and onboarding process quicker because less time is being spent in actually opening the account. So what you have here is you have a reallocation of time from operations to sales. That both makes it more efficient and more effective. So on the next slide, if you look at the core features of digital account opening, so the digital account opening the branch, the core features are you capture the applicant's data. That is with you know the photo ID, you're able to use a tablet in a branch. A branch employee can take a picture of the, the ID and immediately be able to pre-fill information so that the consumer does not have to answer a long line of questions. You can qualify the applicants, as I men mentioned. You have the ability to actually not only validate and verify the, the applicant, but move on to the, um, the sales process and, and to the ability to actually cross-sell maybe credit services or other services. I just went over to verify the applicant's identity. You also have the ability with a tablet to have real-time account funding. So even if the consumer brings in the check, now let's, let's think about this. A consumer brings in a check because they're used to the normal account opening process. They bring in a check 
and the employee uses a tablet and takes a picture of the check and deposits it, there is still a vast number of people that will say, what just happened there? It's a great cross-selling capability to mention to the consumer and to teach the consumer how they'll be able to do that on their own in the future, which helps not only in cross-selling, but in word-of-mouth marketing, as well as getting greater engagement from the consumer. If the consumer knows they do not have to come to the branch to make their deposits here on out, that's going to improve their experience. In addition, automatically creating accounts in the core bank, banking system. This is the whole cross-selling capability. To be able to actually use the information that's been captured to apply towards other accounts, be it a credit card, debit card, online banking, mobile banking, cross-selling of deposit services, retirement services. These all are set up because you've already done the fundamental parts. On the next slide, I show what the ancillary features are. So new features are now becoming best-in-class class standard in the industry. Contextual pre-qualification. So what we mean by that is by capturing this information, by understanding more about the consumer, you can actually pre-qualify consumers for additional products in a contextual manner, which means actually making it much more applicable to who they are. The online banking single sign-on, by avoiding the data entry and identify verification steps, you can go right to the online and mobile account opening or mobile banking apps, thereby not making it so that a person has to open online before they open mobile. All these things are taken care of in one step. This is an important one, the save and resume functionality. This is so important because I think what we'll find is if a consumer is starting the process in their in their house and you don't have the save and resume functionality both in your online, your mobile, and your branch um, uh, processing, what your branch is usually going to do is going to start from scratch. With the tablet application, they can start and resume where the customer left off on their own in a seamless integration and a simplified process. You have the ability to collect electronic signatures. A person can use their, their finger simply to sign the, the tablet. And I'd say two years ago, this was a, a, a sticky part because consumers weren't used to doing that. But I don't know of many consumers that have not signed something electronically, if even for a prescription at Walgreens or someplace else, or through some of the mobile payments functionality. And finally, the ability to upload photos for supporting identification documents. So if we look at this, this if you combine both the core and the ancillary features, you'll have a really strong internal branch-based digital process. And who does this make happy? If you look through the next page, it, it, it improves the expectations and the actual experience of the mobile board. Um, that's a, a Pfizer term. Um, on the next page, which talks about what a, a mobile consumer really is looking for. So as we look on, on the next page, um, if we can flip the slide, we look at um, the desires of the consumer enrollment via mobile, needs-based authentication, digital access, and one-click shop, one shopping. We have to remember, too, that the mobile board is not necessarily the Gen X or the Gen Yer. These are actually people who are also minorities. They're people with higher incomes. There are older people that, that are already digitally engaged. So we have to be careful not to put these people all in the, well, they're the next generation. That generation's here. And in fact, even Gen Y, are the beginning edge, the, the leading edge of the Gen Ys are 35 years old this year. So what are the digital account opening trends? If we look at the next slide. The digital account opening trends are, are as we mentioned before, the use of cameras, the use of touch screens, the ability to do digital and device authentication, geolocation. So this really gets into the mobile capabilities, but for an authentication, for risk, it's always good to know that where the customer is when they're opening the account 
and the ability to have in-branch mobile capture. So what we really are looking at here, and what uh, I think the, the team from MyTex can describe is, really are, these tools are the same that can be used in a mobile or online environment as they can in a branch environment. To bring these all together is really the, the movement towards a truly digital branch, bank and branch. If we look at the next step, the nine steps for designing an optimal user experience is, is clean navigation. This is clean navigation not just for the consumer when they're opening things through a mobile app, but clean navigation for the employee when they're opening with a tablet app. Customer preparation. So what you want to do is, is make sure that the customer knows what they can bring. Um, there's a lot of banks today that talk about the ability to open a, an account either in a branch or with a mobile device, and they pre-tell them what you'll need to have. Simple data collection. You want to simplify the process, and you want to replace paper with digital documents. The pre-population of data. This is the biggest breakthrough, because the ability to not have to point and click and type in a bunch of information to a small form of a mobile device, or even for the branch employee not to have to type in data in a small form on, on, on their mobile device or tablet. Another key is the initiation of the onboarding process. If you free up time and you've already captured the key information, it is extraordinarily easier to sell additional products. You also have the ability to retarget abandoned apps. So this is in the mobile environment <clears throat> or even in the branch environment. If a person abandons a process, let's say they didn't bring all the necessary forms, let's, you know, anything that could possibly come up either in a mobile environment or a branch environment, what's really nice is not only can you start and stop again, but you can go back to the consumer and retarget those consumers and say, by the way, we haven't finished your process. What can we do? This was never really done in the typical old-fashioned branch account opening process. If you started a process and you stopped it, you probably never got a call back from that bank, bank, branch banker. You also want to move the mobile process to the branch. As we said, we're, we're taking mobile account opening and applying it in a branch or fiscal environment situation. And a very important part is to fund electronically. I'm now going to go into a case study that we wrote about recently in the financial brand <clears throat> and that MyTech worked with Santander to develop a branch-based account opening process. And this is a great example because it really brings our ROI to light on what happened, and what's interesting about this is it's not complete. They're, they're still working on it. This has been in the test mode, so they're, they're implementing as we are, we are speaking here, but it's extraordinarily successful. So what happened is Santander actually had an initiative to redesign the account opening process, both internally and externally, so what the customer would see as well as the software and the experience. Um, it's a, it was a multi-stage process that actually started with a tablet-based application that launched in 2015, so it was last year. The brand then redesigned the software for desktop use. So what happened is the simplification process took on additional forms to make it so that they overall simplified everything. So what were the benefits of what Santander did? Well, number one, it reduced the screens. On the next page, it reduced the screens, clicks, and entry of duplicative customer information. So as I mentioned earlier, the benefit of a really clean tablet opening process is you're, you're cutting down the number of screens, the number of processes, number of steps significantly. And I would say that uh, knowing some people have said there, they're not finished yet. They've done a great job of cutting things back. But as in every process, you're going to get some committees involved. And so some people not want to let go of certain steps. But if you've ever opened an account at Movin, Simple, Bank Mobile, or a number of the other digital uh, banks out there, you'll see that their account opening process has, has really gotten to be streamlined into, you know, as little as eight or nine steps. You want to, they also have a benefit of the consolidated sign-up process across different services. 
like debit card, online banking, overdraft protection, things of this nature, and overdraft protection in the sense of um, linked accounts and things of this nature, that in the past required a lot of, of re-entry of information, which from a branch employee's perspective demotivates you to do selling. You have an enhanced quality of interactions between the bankers and the customers because what happens is all of a sudden there's some time for discussion and engagement rather than simply sitting down and punching a key, keyboard. You have a very secure online banking environment and it's environmentally friendly, um, completely paperless tablet banker assist account opening process that reduced the risk and, and it saved paper. So they, they really went all in from the digital standpoint. On the next slide, you'll see today all the paperwork that is still needed for opening accounts is delivered electronic, electronically to the customer, sent and stored securely, and, and is accessible in the online banking uh, application. What is interesting is software right now is, is running on tablets at many of the bank's branches with uh, expansion still going on. And as I said, the tablet capabilities have been applied to desktop processes. So for those branches that aren't yet converted to the tablet process, they actually are now able to have it on their, their, their branch-based um, desktop system. So what was the impact? If you look on the next slide, within a week of deployment, more than 60% of eligible accounts or applications were handled through the new platform, um, more than 2,500 accounts per week. From a user experience plat, um, perspective, what is interesting is look at the change in clicks. They moved from 343 to 180 clicks from the, the legacy new account opening simplification. When they moved from uh, the tablet application, they went from 180 clicks to 88 clicks or from 119 screens to 15 screens. Uh, pretty nice to do the math. Well, what it shows is they've gotten rid of steps and made it so the digital technology actually did allow the work for them. So for the desktop application, it went from 119 to 8 screens, 88 clicks for prospects, 37 for existing customers. Now, how can they know how many clicks it is when you have different lengths of names or anything else? Well, that's actually because you're not inputting the names anymore. You're just inputting, you know, simple data yes and no's, male, females, whatever it may be. What's happened? Net satisfaction score climbed by 10% and the detractor score went down by five on a five point uh, scale. So wrapping up, um, what we're looking at, there's a lot of different ways to branch transfer, trans, ah, sorry, branch transformation. And you basically have to find the right approach for what is right for your bank and your customers. A great place to start is certainly with your brand and what you want to communicate to customers and prospects. What are the, what are the expectations that you're building with your online and mobile experiences and how do you move that to fit your digital um, distribution strategy within the branch? Remember, you need to have a strong online and mobile offering before you remove the physical presence. It doesn't do very good to change your brand structure if you haven't made it really easy to do it in the online and mobile environment. Obviously, waiting to wait for having things to happen is not the best way. Um, we are starting to see significant movement in satisfaction scores between those banks that embrace digital engagement and those that don't. Consumers may say they desire a banking storefront nearby, but they don't necessarily need a standalone facility with multiple in-branch and drive-up teller windows. And essentially, what you really want is the ability to do what you need to do in the best channel uh, available. Basically, what I used to, what I called an opt-to-channel strategy. What you want to do is find the best channel for each engagement. So invest in your overall digital strategy while closing, shrinking, or enhancing your today's branches is definitely an imperative. Um, you do not, if you don't invest in a revised digital strategy or distribution strategy, um, you'll certainly be out of step with your customers as they move to a more digital engagement and uh, lifestyle. I'm not going to turn over to Steve. I'm sorry it took a little longer than I thought, but I um, want to go over uh, uh, how my tech can help you get to that next step. 
Hey, thanks, Jim. Hello, everyone. This is Steve Craig. I'm a product director here at MyTech Systems. And with the time that we have left today, I'd just like to take you through a few slides, uh, one about MyTech, uh, a few about our products, have a demo, and then open it up to questions. So the slide that you see right now, this just gives you a little bit of detail about MyTech. Um, just so you're aware, we are the mobile deposit leaders. So if you've ever taken a picture of a check and deposited it through your smartphone, you've likely used MyTech software. And as Jim mentioned earlier, when he had recently visited a branch, I did as well. And I, I do that a lot fewer these days with the mobile deposit check feature. But when I do go into a branch, what's interesting to me is how little the branches have changed. Uh, I was a, a teller when I first uh, started my career. I worked in a, in a bank, and the way that we opened accounts was very similar to today. If someone came in and they went through the teller line and they were interested in an account, I would refer them over to a person at a desk and the um, customer would go and sit with them. But we have an opportunity with technology today to, to transform that. And a bit of the um, Apple effect or the Apple retail uh, where someone just walks in and they can do anything in any place in the store, I think we'll see uh, banks and credit unions have more of that opportunity. So about my tech, um, we're a public company. Uh, we're on the NASDAQ. You can uh, look us up by our ticker, MITK. We now have offices in San Diego, which is our headquarters. Um, we've got an office in London and an office in Amsterdam. We are a global leader in mobile capture, not just checks. We do identity documents and identity verification. Uh, we've got very many uh, financial institutions uh, using our software. So over 5,200 um, with 70 million end users touched through our technology, including our mobile user experience, which you'll see. We're a mobile innovator. We focus on mobile first. Um, we have been in mobile since about uh, 2008 with the um, introduction of mobile deposit, and that continues to be an area of focus for us, both in terms of user experience as well as our patent portfolio. So we're at 27 patents now with 17 pending. We have a lot of proprietary IP in this area. So we want to go ahead and move to the next slide. The focus of today is about optimizing the branch, and many of the bullets that uh, Jim put out align with uh, our mission and, and our goal around simplifying and speeding up application process. Um, shortening wait times and improving customer satisfaction are a big part of the um, mobile optimization story. And not just um, improving speed, but making sure we have fast and accurate data in that process. When you're extracting information from a driver's license or a passport, getting that information right from that document as opposed to a person speaking their information and having it transcribed help improve the accuracy of, of the, the, the details going into the system. And then making sure that we're freeing up time, um, as Jim mentioned, for conversations and for cross-selling and allowing the branch represented to be more productive is all an important part of, of the process. So one of the products that leads into that is our mobile fill. Um, mobile fill is all about quick and accurate data. Um, this is a process of using a photo of a driver's license or a passport to easily pre-fill data into a form. Um, we do that with, with mobile first, um, and we're using both the uh, barcode from the back of the driver's license as well as the content that's on the front. Um, improving onboarding capabilities, re reducing friction, maximizing profitability through that onboarding process, and of of course, reducing friction are all important. The other thing that's important about mobile fill is the mobile part, right? These are use cases that allow someone within a branch to move throughout that whole entire space, but it also allows for a branch representative to go anywhere where there's an internet connection with. So today, cellular connections and 4G are pervasive. So you really can take that branch onboarding experience beyond the walls of the branch location to community events or um, sporting events, et cetera, where you want to go where your customers are. Next slide. So as part of the mobile fill process, we also have the capability to do a verification, which we call our, our mobile verify product. And the mobile verify is all about instant ID document authentication. Um, we're using the same user experience for the pre-fill at the same time that we're doing the verify. So it becomes very seamless to both the branch personnel and the customer um, as we're pre-filling information that we're also verifying the document. So we have the, the fast and accurate data. We have broad document support. 
So this is a little bit more focused on branch transformation in the U.S., but we expand beyond that. We're, we're um, global with our identity document coverage. Part of the data flow is also making sure that you um, know who this customer is and you have the details that help feed your downstream processes for KYC and AML. Um, using security features that are built into the driver's licenses, we also can help ensure that this is an actual authentic driver's license. And the branch transformation scenario, it's not as common for someone to come in and bring a printed or, or, or a fraudulent license because the um, personnel can verify it right there physically. But as we think about scenarios outside of the branch, being able to know that that's an authentic document in that flow is very important. And then ultimately, reducing costs by verifying customers very quickly is an important part of that story. Now, for both Mobile Fill and Mobile Verify, the center of that interaction is our MySnap user experience. MySnap is the current um, experience that we use for the check deposit capture as well as ID capture. So you can see here in the slide, it is a guided um, video-based experience prompting the user with information about their capture session to help them be successful. So we use successive video frames to analyze in real time the corners of the document, the sharpness, the brightness. We do um, built-in benchmarking across the ecosystem of Android and iOS devices to ensure a great experience. Um, part of that capture is also the detection of the security features that are built into the license. And then ultimately the capture leads into the downstream uh, processing at our server to be able to provide the data into your application workflow. So we have a couple of slides that show this MySnap experience in the context of a tablet. These are pre-recorded just for the sake of the webinar to show you um, how this works. So let's go ahead and kick into the first demo. Here we're initiating a capture. We're selecting the document type and we're presenting the driver's license aligning it to the guides, and successfully capturing. The next is the back side of the driver's license. We're capturing and then we're pulling information from the barcode, the PDF 417 barcode that's on the back of the majority of licenses. So with this combination, we've just captured those very quickly. So imagine across the table a driver's license is be, being handed to the branch personnel or, or maybe the tablet's being handed to the customer to capture the license. We process those um, quickly through to the server and we return results. Now how these results get laid out is completely up to the financial institution. They may be given directly to the um, application workflow or they may be provided to the um, branch personnel to take the next step in the process. So for this demo, we're just showing the breadth of information that we've collected in that quick front and back capture, including a verification score, which is looking at the information on the back of, and front of the license. Um, we're also doing in the front capture, the evaluation of that security feature. So where MyTech sits is really at the mobile capture and how you define your workflow can vary. So you may do the driver's license capture at one point in the process. There may be a series of other steps or questions. And then on the back side of the process, you may capture a check or scan a credit card to help with the funding interaction. And each time the goal there is to use the camera as a keyboard, use a camera to accelerate the process and allow the branch representative to have a more fluid conversation to focus on cross-selling, to focus on relationship building, to get through that process um, quickly. And that's what my tech is all about. So I think from here, we have time to open it up to Q&A. So Patricio, I'll, I'll pass it back to you and uh, maybe you can send us questions. That's right, thank you very much, Jim and Steve. Um, so now, folks, uh, please feel free to type in the questions that you may have. On the right hand side of, um, of the window, you have a box where you can type them. So let's get started. Um, Jim, this is um, addressed to you. So, how much of a priority do you think this should be on our bank roadmap? Um, that's, that's the 
sixty thousand dollar question, whatever the number is right now. But um, <clears throat> I the, the two key elements when when companies say, "What do I need to put on my strategic plan now?" The two things that that I think are the most important, both from a financial efficiency standpoint, and from becoming a digital bank, and from a sales standpoint. The two major ones that I believe are the are really the most important are mobile account opening to be able to allow consumers to truly open an account completely from beginning to end in the simplified mobile process. And it, right after that, the ability for the branch to benefit from that exact same technology. So where should it, where should it go? I believe, I mean, there's all kinds of priorities right now. and, and Priorities range from uh, regulatory to operational, all these other things. But when you look at the different things that, that digital account opening, mobile account opening, and digital branch account opening can bring to a, an organization, what you're looking at is is the fact that these are the the mobile branch opening or mobile account opening and the branch digital opening are two key elements from a branding, from a cultural from a cost, revenue, and sales perspective. So I, I think if they are not on the the top of the list of things to do or pre dog on close, as well as doing a better job with data analytics, which I still think is somewhat integrated with this, um, we're missing the boat. I think it's very important. Thank you, Jim. Um, so I'm going to read the question that we had for Steve. And it is, is the verification software available via web services or only native? Great, great question. So for the demo that you saw today in the context of branch transformation, we showed native, but we certainly have products that support um, native mobile web as well as web services. So we offer uh, on-premise and cloud-based installations. So it can be used uh, as a web service method as long as the image is meeting our, our quality standards and um, image quality assessment. Typically, we provide MySnap, both native and mobile web, as part of our uh, structure so that you can guide the user to a great picture. But how you use that is up to your um, workflow and your uh, infrastructure. Okay, great. Now, second question for you, Steve. How do we ensure the driver's license <clears throat> being uploaded is not someone picked up from the street do you check the bio data, such as fingerprints or something? So in the case of a branch scenario, the customer is presenting that identity document to the branch representative. So we assume that there is some evaluation of the picture by the branch representative against the person who's standing right in front of them. Um, we do understand that in a mobile um, remote acquisition where a person is not present, that that scenario may come up. Um, one of the products that was not shown today here was our facial capture product where we asked the end user to take a picture of themselves with aliveness so that that can be matched to the identity document. And that's the primary method, that comparison that we do for that particular type of question of how do we know that this person is really the person presenting the ID doc. Great. Thank you. Um, next question, Jim. Um, do you see the shift to a digital branch primarily happening in North America, or is this a global phenomenon? Well, we definitely have more branches than anybody else, um, and a whole lot more that need to be closed and made more efficient. So it is much more of a, a phenomenon in the U.S., but but also what's interesting is when you look at uh, or organizations in place like Turkey and Spain and other places, they are so much more advanced in this process. They're actually enabling people to open mortgages via digital devices. And um, they're much less branch centric. You do have some countries such as Germany and, and some others that still love their branches like uh, people in the United States do. But overall, I, I'd say it is truly a, a universal global uh, phenomenon that everyone is trying to move to digital. There, there's really, from a uh, data capture, data storage, all these other elements, every one of the benefits of a branch or a mobile um, account opening process going to digital benefits organizations in any country. But I, I think 
it is probably becoming a bigger challenge in the United States because we have so many more branches and we do things in a very inefficient way. I mean, until a couple of years ago, I know that a number of organizations thought that it was a government requirement to have um, uh, signature cards, physical paper signature cards, which is not at all the case. So I think it's 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 we're we're making a lot of progress. Yeah, I think we're going to probably see even more uh, innovations at Finnovate this year around the same line. So I think what we need to do is is really just grab the bull by the horns and, and move towards digital processes for all the reasons that we described. Well, thank you. And we have more questions coming up. So, Steve, is the user experience brandable or do we need to use MyTex? So the experience that you saw today was just a default experience. Our SDKs are fully customizable. In fact, uh, MySnap is being used in four out of the five top retail banks. And if you go across those, you'll see each has customized how they present the uh, user interface elements. So it's fully customizable to brand to be able to match um, the application that it's going into, as well as the workflow is customizable. So how you capture at what point um, in your process is completely up to you, as well as any tutorial screens or guided help information. Great. And then the last question, um, you mentioned this use case uh, about using in the community. Could you elaborate? Sure. So what I was referencing there is the idea that the branch opening can extend beyond the branch. So one scenario is opening accounts at a sporting event or perhaps a university if, if the, the bank visits a school and they have um, potential new customers walking by a, a booth or a station with a mobile device, having the branch software and having an internet connection, you could do that same interaction. You can guide them through the account opening and it could be checking accounts, it could be a credit card application, it could be loan origination at an event. Imagine like one of the, the uh, uh, rental car shows where they're selling used cars. Uh, you can do all of the origination process through that by having this tool. Okay, great. Um, Jim, um, Steve, thank you so very much. We're running a lot uh, out of time. So folks, if you have any further questions, please feel free to send us an email. We'll be following up with you with the recorded version of this webinar. And once again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.